Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. We just want to welcome everyone that's in the sanctuary and also all those who are tuning in online. Uh, we wish you a pleasant, happy Sabbath. And this is our youth day. And we just thank God for you. Thank God for waking you up this morning and that you'll find yourself um, to be able to worship with us. So as we're about to go into our section of praise and worship, we pray that the Lord will be a blessing unto you all. Amen. Above all power, above all king, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man, you were here before. Above all powers, above all thrones, above all wonders this world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the earth, there's no way to man. Above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man, you are here before. Above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all wonders this world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the earth. Above 
lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on
Praise and worship team for giving all those wonderful songs. Anyways. I do have something to say. Uh, so when Pastor Mitchell, when he texted me saying that uh, I should be doing divine service, I was excited and like, I was just excited and like, I was, it came to night time and then I couldn't sleep. It was like, it was 2 a.m. and then I was just thinking, like, oh, what am I going to do? Who's this? Who's going to do this? So then it came three. I still couldn't sleep. And then it came four. And that's when I finally slept. So I just want to say thank you to God for allowing me to sleep, to get, be well rested for this occasion. Anyway, I just want to call on Brother Javan to do the opening prayer for this. just want to give God thanks for another youth day, for another Sabbath. Welcome everybody. Make sure we have a blessed day and we need to go on. Amen. So yeah, um, as we bow our head in reverence to pray, all right, now I'll just say a prayer for the opening prayer for today and um, yeah, hopefully we'll be blessed. So yeah, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom done, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you Lord for this day, for this opportunity for us all. We just want to pay tribute to you for carrying us through this week, this year thus far, and on a daily basis. Dear Lord, I pray that we can cultivate a mind and heart of true worship towards you. Dear God, I pray that we learn to serve and surrender to you, to worship you in, in spirit and in real truth. I just want to thank you, God, for your patience with us. As the scripture says, as it will come today, we were your enemies before, but now we aspire to be the best of friends to you as you died for us to have this chance. Remind us daily and let us remember our true aim is to reach the pinnacle of life and reach your kingdom, which is being prepared for us. At last, I pray that this youth day will be, provide us with the useful tools to take into our spiritual walk and all shall be in favor of you and nothing of ourselves. 
let your will be done for our lives to shine through us more and more each day. Lead us to victory and strengthen our faith in you, becoming fearless in this day and age. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 So right now, I have great pleasure in calling little sister Ebby and myself to do the welcome message. So welcome to Youth Day Service. I hope you enjoy it very much. You'll do loads of stuff that um, go to the Lord and you want to praise him. Yes, I just want to greet the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. I want to greet all pastors, Bishop, I want to greet you. I want to greet all the saints in the church, all the pastors, all the evangelists, all the, just everyone in the church and the children. So today is our youth day and it's going to be wonderful. So thank you guys for all coming out. So now we're going to have the scripture reading, as you all know. Romans chapter 5, verse 6 to 11. Can we get on the board, please? All right, yeah, can I call Latia to do the, the scripture reading, please? Praise the Lord, church. Lord. Scripture reading is taken from Romans 5, 6 to 11. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man one die, yet per per resventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commandeth his love towards us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Okay, so now, as we always do, every single Sabbath, we're going to sing the Cover Me song. I always love this song whenever I'm on the piano or whenever I'm in the studio. Like, as soon as I hear them do the scripture reading, I just like to start singing it. So, yeah, I just want to start some singing this song. Can you guys start off, please? Thank you. 
all of the youth, please make your way down here so that we can sing our youth group song.
Sister Josiah to give a wonderful exhortation. Good afternoon, church. Today I'll be looking into Romans chapter 5, verses 6 to 11. Our theme today is the ultimate sacrifice, Jesus paid it all. I want to draw everyone's attention to the word reconcile, as I'm sure most of us have noticed the repetition of the word in the, in the scripture, in the, King J in the New King James Version. If we break down the word, we notice it has the prefix re, which in Latin means to bring, to bring back, and the word reconcile means to bring something together. The French version of the word concile is conciliar, meaning to restore friendly relations or to coexist in harmony. In our case, the friendly relations Paul is referring to is when God created Adam and Eve, letting them live peace, peacefully in the Garden of Eden with only one rule to follow. However, when they broke God's commandments, they introduced sin and death to the world. As a result of that, as a result of that, because every action has a, has a, every action has a reaction. So, this didn't only affect them, but the rest of mankind to follow, leaving us all to be born in sin and condemned to one day die. The effects are still present in this time. Jesus, on the other hand, did what Adam and Eve could not. Instead of faltering and crumbling under the temptations of the devil, he rose up against it. This is evident in Matthew 4, verses 1 to 11, where he is led into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan himself a total of three times. How many of us can, can make to the second tempt, temptation and still refuse him? Jesus was offered cities, gold, and anything his heart could desire if he bowed down and worshipped the devil. Yet, he came back with a strong response, saying, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Where Adam and Eve gave in to the first temptation cause, causing sin and death, Jesus offered the path of hope and redemption to all who could lend an ear by refusing. Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice for our sins. He was born and gave his life to serve the Lord. When Jesus spoke to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus is reminding us that through, that through his death, he is offering to pay for our sins, allowing us to have a connection with him and the Lord our God. Without Jesus dying for our sins and allowing us to connect with God, we wouldn't be able to offer our lives to him and make it to heaven one day. Thank you for listening. Okay, now I'm going to call upon the main speaker, Brother Jermaine Robinson from White City. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord one more time. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen. I just want to thank the moderator first for the introduction and for moderating the divine service with such grace and efficiency. It doesn't go unnoticed, bro. Keep doing it. I want to thank the musicians for playing such lovely songs. You know, allowing us to lift our hands in the sanctuary, for allowing us to continue to sing praises to his name. So I thank you for your contribution tonight. I want to thank the praise and worship team, of course, for singing with such beautiful voices. 
You do such a great job. I truly feel his presence is here today. Praise the Lord. I want to thank the elders, of course, for being in the church today in support of all the youth. You know, it's our duty, of course, as elders to continue encouraging and being in support of the youth. Just allowing us, as well as the little ones, to continue to grow and develop. Just to continue to dwell in the house of the Lord. It's important. You know, we know Jesus loved the little children, right? He emphasizes this on many, many occasions that church, if we do not love and seek the Lord, our God, like a little boy or girl, then we shall not get into the kingdom of God. So I just want to thank the youth for being here today, seeing so many in attendance. It's such a blessing. I'm so grateful to be amongst your midst. Your contribution towards today doesn't go unnoticed. It's inspiring. Praise the Lord. I want to um, greet Bishop and thank him for allowing me to give the word in your church today. I want to greet my White City family, of course. You know, traveling far to be in attendance today in support of me. I appreciate it. Church, I just want to greet the entire congregation today because it's so grateful to see so many of you on the Sabbath. I thank you for being present today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. I hope we all had a blessed week. I look forward to listening to all the items tonight as well as any testimonies we might have. I really love listening to them because they really touch my heart, you know. Just continuing to listen to one's personal journey with Jesus, one's personal encounters with Christ, it's, it touches my heart because God put so much effort to build a relationship with us, so it's encouraging to hear how we put the effort back. Everyone's journey is different, of course, you know, the struggles we face in life, they vary from one brother to another sister. But of course, we must understand that God never said the road would be easy. But small is the gate and narrow is the road that leads to life and only few find it, right? Amen. Praise the Lord. So let's just continue to build each other up today, encourage one another. Let us, see the, let us see life the way God sees us, for we are a chosen people, a family of God, church. And Jesus died on the cross, which is the theme today, for us to experience his love, his joy, that true and inner peace. So we praise the Lord. Of course, we cannot experience that true and inner peace God has set for us without these trials and tribulations. Because, you know, these tests, no matter how many we face, it's an opportunity for us to continue growing and developing as a Christian. You know... Our purpose is to continue increasing our faith in him more and more on a daily basis. Every day, church, we should wake up and make the active and conscious decision to follow Jesus and to keep his commandments. The scripture says every day is a day the Lord has made, so we must rejoice and be glad in it. Praise, it. Praise the Lord. So I say that to say the way Jesus set the example for us is our duty to set the examples for the little ones in the church. Praise the Lord. It's not just words of advice, church. It's an instruction, and it's mentioned many times in the Bible, that we must dedicate our lives to serving God first and foremost. And for us to truly be great, we must be the servant of others. Amen? This is why it is important for the youth to recognize their place of sanctuary. You know, when I see the youth in the church, it just fills me up with great joy. Because although I'm not considered youth anymore, of course, of course I was still once a little boy, you know, attending these very same special days in celebration of the youth and the body of Christ, you know. 
And I say that to say if it wasn't for the elders in the church, then I would not have the gracious opportunity of giving the word here today. So we praise the Lord once again. I pray that we are all living testimonies, church. Because the youth, you know, when people see the youth, they're a testament of their environment, right? They're a product of their environment, so we must lead by example, amen? Praise the Lord. I am conscious of time, so I am going to get straight into it. But one thing I know that doesn't matter is, well, how long or short the preacher may be, as long as there's a clear message delivered today. I just pray, Lord, that everyone will take something away and have something to remember. I pray, Lord, that as I deliver the word today, we each, each and every one of us gather that newfound wisdom and knowledge just to have that one thing we can apply into our everyday life. Because that's what matters. Praise the Lord. I just want to read the scripture reading again to your hearing, remind the congregation of what the passage we are focusing on today is. Can we please gather our Bibles and turn to Romans 5, 6 to 11? I will be referring to many scriptures, so we need the sword at hand. Praise the Lord. When we find it, please say amen. Amen. Romans 5, verses 6 to 11, King James Version. And it says, For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet per adventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God's commandment, God commended, sorry, but God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's break this down, church. You know, in the very first script, in the very first line, it says, For when we were yet without strength, in due time God died for the ungodly. Church, this is a powerful verse because it allows us to continue to dwell on the atoning death of Christ and causes us to remember, you know, why he did it. Well, first, let's ask ourselves, what does the atoning death of Christ actually mean? Right? Romans 5, the verses 9 to 10, it says, Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God, by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Church, we should see these words as a written reminder that ourselves are corrupt sinners in need of the atoning sacrifice of Christ. It's meant to definitely reassure us that the remedy we must seek is found in the blood of Jesus. Because when Jesus was offered as the perfect sacrifice, the inadequate sacrifices in the temple at the time was put to rest. Church, there was no need for any other sacrifice because Christ dealt with our sins once and for all and it was to never be repeated. Romans 6 verse 23, it says, For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Jesus fulfilled the requirement that he declared because he paid it all. And this passage also reminds us of, of the new covenant. 
in Christ, it reassures us that as children of God, we are meant to inherit the good things yet to come. Praise the Lord. If we come by faith, church, by believing the ultimate sacrifice for sin was made by Jesus Christ, it is great comfort for us to realize God remembers these sins no more. Our God is a good God. He remembers and forgets our sins based on the atoning sacrifice of Christ. But church, let's delve a little deeper into the character of Christ because this was no ordinary sacrifice. Christ Jesus, his behavior did not merely make him forthcoming to die, but perfectly obedient of his father in his death on the cross. So let's look at the perfect obedience of Jesus Christ. We all know that Jesus lived a life of perfect obedience and submission to God. He was the one man who graced this earth who was absolutely sinless. And he came as a submission to God and as a representation of his people. We must remember, church, that he fulfilled the expectations of the prophets and provided a way of salvation for us. But how did he do this? Can we please turn our Bibles to Hebrews 10? Let's look at Hebrews 10, verses 5 to 9. Praise the Lord. When we find it, please say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. And it says, Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering, thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. In burnt offerings and sacrifice for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. Then I said, Lo, I come. In the volume of the book, it is written of me to do thy will, O God. Above when he said, sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings, an offering of sin, for sin, sorry, thou wouldest not. Neither hast pleasure therein which are offered by thy law, by thee law. Then he said, lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. Praise the Lord. When we read Hebrews, we see the author is trying to put his words into the perspective of Jesus Christ. It's almost as if these words are coming out the mouth of Jesus himself. Because it says, it says in Psalms, quickly, 40, 60, um, verse 8, sorry, 6 to 8. Sacrifice and offerings thou didn't not desire. Mine is, hast thou opened. Burn offerings and sin offerings hast thou not required. Then I said, lo, I come into the volume of the book. It is written of me. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yeah, thy, la thy law is within my heart. So we see the words of Hebrew are, is, are as if they are spoken through the words of Christ at his incarnation. The writer of Hebrews makes fond of taking Old Testament passages and applying them into the work and in the body of Christ, into the person of Christ, of course, because he says again, lo, I have come to do thy will. Church, we cannot miss this emphasis of a savior, of a Messiah come to save his people. John 1, verse 9, it says, that was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. This short verse here in John, it's a way of referring to his incarnation. You know, when Christ was born, when the word became flesh and dwelt among us. We must understand or ponder what God wanted from that. Why did he, why did he bring himself in human form to dwell among us? It's because he desired perfect obedience. 
And he found this perfect obedience in the will of the person and the work of Jesus Christ. Jesus came to do the will of God as he stated very clearly before his death that night in the garden of Gethsemane. Matthew 26, verse 39, it's, he says, Not my will, but let your will be done. Doing the will of God was crucial into the life of Jesus. Jesus was a true God and a true man who fulfilled the expectations of his prophets. And it was this perfect obedience of Christ that culminates in the truth. He was the perfect example of being absolutely sinless and obedient and a, represent, a, representat a representation of his people. Amen? Church, like I said, he did not come to be served, but he came to serve. He did not come to earth to merely show off his ability, to show off what powers he could do. He came for us, his people, and for our salvation. Church, this is why I say it is crucial for us to lead by example, young or old. Because representation plays a crucial part in the story of the Bible. We see the scribes, we see the kings, the priests, the Pharisees representing the people of Israel, but that wasn't true representation, was it? Jesus said it himself, woe to you, hypocrites. We can even push this back all the way to the beginning of the Bible, church. In Luke 3, verse 38, the Bible calls Adam the son of God, or a son of God, which is interesting because Adam was, of course, called to obey but didn't. Instead, Adam, a son of God, disobeyed. And as a public representa representation, it was this disobedience that affected all of humanity. Church, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 22, it says, For as in Adam all die, but even so in Christ shall all be made alive. You see the contrast here. Just as Adam represented humanity in his sinful disobedience, Christ represented humanity in his perfect obedience. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Romans 5 verse 19. I'm going through these scriptures very quick. I apologize if you want to write them down. Well, for as one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one, many shall be made righteous. Praise the Lord, church. We see the entire life of Jesus Christ was lived as a second, as a second Adam, basically, but a true son of God on behalf of his people. Christ was this substitute for his people in two distinct ways, right? Christ's obedience was also, was, you could you could say it was passive in a way by the way he would bore God's wrath in our place, taking the curse of God on for himself because of human's disobedience. But he was also a substitute in the perfect and positive obedience we call active disobedience, where he offered up to God throughout the whole course of his life, persistently loving God and loving his neighbor with his whole um, being. To summarize, church, Jesus Christ came as an incarnated divine son of God to live a human life in perfect obedience and submission. And while we are unable to live a life without sin today, it was Jesus who lived a perfect life on our behalf. A life attested to throughout the Bible. This obedient life of Jesus, church, fulfilled the expectations of the prophets in the Old Testament. They expected God to send a Messiah to rescue, to rescue his people and provide a, su a sufficient sacrifice for their sins. And Jesus was both of these prophecies. Praise the Lord. 
Church, let us learn from Jesus' perfect obedience because it was this behavior that allowed him to not merely willingly go to the sacrifice, to, to the cross. Let us break down the nature of his death because this death was unjust, it was willing, it was sacrificial, but it was obedient. Church, can we turn our Bibles quickly to Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, chapter 53. That's Isaiah chapter 53, verses 6 to 8. Amen. And it says, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own ways. And the Lord have laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He, he is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. A and last. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. Amen. First church, we see that Jesus died unjustly. He was oppressed. He was beaten. He was tortured. The word used here by Isaiah is also found in Exodus when they speak of the oppression of Israel, the people of Israel. This comparison just highlights the unjust, the unjust nature of Jesus' death and how it was carried out by the, the rulers, the supposed representation of the people. We see in the gospel accounts that these individuals allowed false charges and witnesses to condemn our Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. And all of them held unlawful trials just to seal that gruesome fate of Jesus being on the cross. Jesus did not deserve to die. He had committed no sin. Church, these trials and the conviction of Jesus was the greatest injustice we've seen by men in human history, reminding us of our sin, but also God's holiness. We as humanity are born sinners and deserve the conviction for all of our sins at the hands of a holy and just God, but Jesus was the one who took our place. He allowed himself to be unjustly executed because he understood there was no other way to satisfy God's wrath for us. Praise the Lord. All right. Secondly, Jesus died willingly. When I say this, I mean Jesus was afflicted, right? But it was his submission to affliction that implies that there was a plan and purpose for his death. And he submitted to that plan willingly. This just speaks of Jesus' great love for us, that he is so willingly, he was, he, he was so willing to be oppressed and tortured for his people and to be crucified for us. Listen here, it says in Matthew 26, verse 53, King James Version, it says, Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father, and he shall present me, he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels. Let me read that again. Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father, and he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels? Church, we know 
that Jesus could have called 12 legions of angels to his defense to save him from humiliation and death, but he did not. He willingly died an unjust death for his people. Church, how many of us would give our lives for another human being? Church, we see this addressed in, from Paul, the apostle, in Romans 5, 7. He says, For one will hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps for, a, for the good man someone would dare even to die. But Jesus knew the price he had to pay. He was the perfect sacrifice for the fallen human race. And in his humanity, he knew how much undeserved pain and agony he would endure. Yet he still went to the cross willingly. More willingly than people are, people today are even willing to come to the throne of grace to give a testimony. Church, let's dwell on this willingness because it's truly something to be in awe of. All right, third, Jesus died sacrificially like a lamb's led to his slaughter, he was offered up as a sacrifice. There's so much foreshadowing in the Bible that calls on a saviour to die for his people. The Apostle John recounts calling Jesus the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Back then, people, of course, were educated on the importance of sacrifice. The significance of it. We see this from Cain and Abel's offering and the laws handed down in the law of Moses. God demanded a sacrifice for sin as a reminder of, of his true power and a reminder for us, for us to recognize that we are not holy. That sin is a curse that demands a death. And that one day the promised Messiah would come to earth and cleanse all of our sins once and for all, unrighteousness. The Apostle Paul also says in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, and ye are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. This sacrifice was a violent and bloody death on the cross. But it was the blood of Christ, our Passover, that covers us today. Delivering us from the bondage of flesh, the bondage of the world and the bondage of the evil one. Amen? For Jesus said, Lord, do not take us out of the world, but protect us from the evil one. Amen? Praise the Lord. Last but not least, Jesus died obediently. This character, his character was like a sheep that is silent. There's many references and comparisons to Jesus being a sheep, the Lamb of God. This is the significance, it's a significant burden of the text, just highlighting his obedience of a suffering servant. Jesus was not mere willing to die, but perfectly obedient to his father. 1 Peter 2, verses 23 to 24, he says, Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. Who, his own self, bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes were healed. Amen? Amen. Peter notes that Jesus' obedience shows the key to faithful obedience and how we should entrust ourselves to God. Jesus' obedience, it was a way to enable ours. Jesus died obediently so we might live obedient lives. 
And even as we struggle with obedience to the Lord, of course, we know the road is not easy. But we are made to continue to grow. And we are made to continue to be like Christ. We must understand, church, that we will never flee from the temptation, from our fight with flesh during our temporary period of life on this earth. I really like Hebrews. The author Hebrews, the author of Hebrews, sorry, reminds us of Jesus' perfect life and his obedience on the cross. Because in Hebrews 4.16, it says, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and also find grace to help in time of need. Amen. This allows us and all those who trust in him to find forgiveness of their sins, to draw near to the throne of grace with the utmost confidence. For the spirit of God, it does not make us fearful, but it brings us courage. It brings us confidence, joy, power, and discipline to find obedience in our lives. church if there's one thing I want us to take away that it's important to recognize salvation can only be found in the name of Jesus Christ the lamb of God who was sacrificed on a cross for all those who didn't even believe in his work as we meditate on this topic today church let us give thanks for the willingness let us give thanks for the, the obedience for the unjust and sacrificial death he made for us. Because he was the perfect example so that we might live in him forever today. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So what is the result of one sacrifice from Christ? Church, let's take our Bibles and look at Hebrews 10, verses 10 to 18. Amen. Hebrews 10, verses 10 to 18, it says, by the, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering, oftentimes the same sacrifice which can never take away sin. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins, forever sat down at the right hand of God from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made in his footstool for by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us for after that he said before this is the covenant that I make with them after those days said the Lord I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds will I write them. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. As mentioned before, verse 11, it clearly states that the work of the priests and the Pharisees in the Levitical temple before the sacrifice of Christ, their work was never finished. On a, continuous and daily, on a continuous and daily basis, people would come and make sacrifices to God. Rivers of blood would throw daily through the temple of Jerusalem as one animal sacrifice after another was slain for the sins of his people. The high priest could never rest 
because his job was never completed. But we see here the writer of Hebrews draws out the contrast with the priesthood of Jesus and his sacrifice, his one sacrifice for all time. Christ's work as a priesthood was finished. And in fact, Christ sat down in everlasting rest at the right hand of God because our redemption was completed and the Levitical priesthood was now terminated. There was no other need for more animal sacrifices because the ultimate sacrifice was paid. Jesus paid it all. He became human in order to pay for our sins. Throughout his life, he was sinless and lived perfectly because he was human. And without sin, he was able to take our sin and sacrifice himself on the cross to pay for our mistakes. But church, we know he rose again. And it's because of this, we as Christians can now be free from sin. Church, the problem sin just continues to create in our lives. It created a real problem for humanity. Our sin is what makes it impossible for us to truly develop a strong and personable relationship with God and gain eternal life from our own power. But God is perfect and loving, of course. And because of this, he is just. He cannot let sin go without punishment. Without a solution, though, we would be bound for destruction and pain if it was not for Christ and his ability for us to be free from sin. Romans 8, verses 1 to 2, it says quickly, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Jesus Christ had made me free from the law of sin and death. Church, as Christians, it's so easy to allow this guilt and shame to just easily to, to let it creep into our lives. But it's important for us to remember that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because we have been set free from the law of sin and death. We do not have to be bound by guilt or shame anymore because as long as we repent, we will find forgiveness in Christ. Amen? Amen. Let us remember, church, that this forgiveness is available for all those who ask it. We must recognize that God is worthy of our praise, but most importantly, our obedience because he blesses those who obey him, who fear him. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge and wisdom, but only fools despise instruction. Church, we must recognize that Jesus made a way for us to finally be reconciled with our Father God who art in heaven. Praise the Lord. Church, 1 John 1 to 9. It says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Jesus did not pay for our sins only in part. He paid for all of our sins. John 8, 36. If the Son is... Therefore shall make you free. You shall be free indeed. Jesus made a way for us to be with God by defeating death. By defeating hell. This does not mean we are ultimately free from sin and temptation, church, but We must recognize the consequences of our actions. But what it does mean, church, that we do not have to live a life of fear anymore. Instead, we can have confidence. We can have freedom in our salvation through Jesus Christ. Just to refer to the scripture reading again, Romans 5, 6 to 8. For when we are yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly, for scarcely a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commandeth his love 
towards us in that while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. So we should be so thankful to God, church. We should thank him for his plan to fix our brokenness, to fix our mistakes, to redeem us through sending the ultimate and perfect human sacrifice, which was his one and only son. Because now we may find sanctification through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Of course, the opportunity of sanctification is there. We only need to reach out and grab it to open up our hearts to the Lord. But yet the act of making someone holy through sanctification is a process. Every day, church, we are progressively throughout this life being sanctified. This process, however, church, is a great tension for our Christian life because we received sanctification, of course, once and for all, but have we achieved it yet? That's what we must ask ourselves. We are not now already perfect and sinless because of Christ's sacrifice but that Christ has fully earned perfection for us, which we will receive in glory, and one day we will be glorified. Church, sanctification is our past, it's our present, it's our future. The writers of the New Testament, they stress this process of sanctifying, right? The work of perfection is not yet complete. However, it will be one day when Christ has made perfect forever to those who are in the process of being made perfect. Romans 8, 28 to verse 30. It says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom did he predestinate? Then he also called, and whom he called them, he also justified. And whom he justified, he also glorified. Amen? Church, we must understand that we are still a work in progress. But there is a clear image God sets for us that we must realize is the final outcome. God has predestined us to become like his son, to be conformed into the image of Christ. That's why each and every day he says we must take up our cross and follow him. It's because in Christ we find sanctification by his shed blood. And in Christ we receive these benefits that were purchased by the death of Jesus. And they have been ours since the moment we truly believed in our Christ as the saviour. Our sins have been forgiven, church, but our conscience. Our sins have been forgiven, church, and our conscience have been cleansed, sorry. And we have peace with God. It is the gift of eternal life we must strive after. It's that eternal security, that reconciliation with God, that is the final outcome. And we cannot do that unless we seek first the kingdom of God in each and every single thing that we do. Church, by doing this, Christ sanctifies the believer. But then afterwards, he perfects them. Praise the Lord. Last but not least. A new covenant that Jesus commenced. Church, with the completion of Christ's sacrifice. A new covenant has now been initiated. We have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. And we show this celebration each and every time we come to church, we come to the throne of grace, we celebrate the Lord's Supper. It is the Holy Spirit truly at work in our hearts. God imputed all of our sins to Jesus Christ and he died in our place as our representative. Moreover, God also imputed all the perfect righteousness 
of Jesus Christ to us. And now we have a perfect standing before him for all eternity. This is what makes this new covenant so beautiful. It's that God remembers our sins no more as long as we repent. Church, Hebrews 10, 16 to verse 18, it says, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, said the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds will I write them. And their sins and iniquity I will remember no more. Now where the remission of these is, there is no more offering of sin. Church, because our sins are under his blood, he casts them away. He has forgiven and forgotten them. This reminds me of the Psalms in chapter 103, verse 11 to 13. It says, for as the heaven is high above, so great is his mercy towards them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. The reassurance from these scriptures, church, is undeniable. And they speak for, them, they speak for themselves. Romans 8.1 There is... Therefore now no condemnation to them which are, in cre which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Praise the Lord each and every time. Praise the Lord. And just to conclude, church, I just, wanna, I just want us to see Christ's sacrifice as final. It's a, true, it's a privilege that we must recognize that our sins and iniquities will be remembered no more, church. Same chapter, it says, verse 17 to 19, and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. We must praise God because now there is no need for any other sacrifice. Jesus paid it all. By his death, Christ opened up the way into the presence of God. As the curtains of the veil shredded open in the temple, as Jesus died, one door was closed, but another door opened for us. Praise the Lord. There is no longer any real church between God and his people. We have access to God through the shed blood of Jesus. Matthew 27, 50 to verse 52. It says, Jesus, when he cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, and the graves were open, and many bodies of the saints which every many bodies of the saints which slept arised again. Praise the Lord, church. Jesus says, He is the way, He is the truth, He is the life, and no one comes to the Father but through Him. Praise the Lord. Ephesians 2, verses 8 to 10, it says, For by grace you are saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is a gift of God. That not of yourselves, not of works, lest shall any man boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Paul reminds us that we have been saved through grace and through faith and that salvation is not of our own work or effort but it is a gift of God we must recognize this privileged church the ultimate sacrifice it's because of this we cannot boast in ourselves instead we should give thanks to him daily for the will of God allows us to rejoice always we must pray without ceasing we must give thanks to him in each and every single thing that we do this is the will of God for Christ in us praise the Lord
church, we must ask God for the capabilities to reflect his light onto others. We must let our light shine onto others so they can see our good works and give thanks to him and only him. Praise the Lord. In saving us, he gave us a new life. He provided us with a path to fulfill our potential. And this was only made possible because Jesus' sacrifice was once and for all. Praise the Lord, church. That's all I have for today. Amen. That was a wonderful word. That was so wonderful. Okay, so now we have the outer call. I mean, no, first, we're going to call the praise and worship team to sing before the outer call.
주 어디 주 고추 주 고추 주 고추 bless the lord bless his name bless the lord come on church somebody praise god praise his holy name come on believers magnify the name of jesus hallelujah glory to god blessed be his holy name you know before before i pray this afternoon you know sometimes believers you don't understand what is warfare oh praise the name of jesus but as I stand here, not 100% in health, but as the praise team did that song, His blood never lose its power. You could have heard that Brother Jason died last night, but thank God. Oh, hallelujah. Blessed be the holy name of Jesus. And if you don't understand what I'm talking about, and if you don't know, then don't say anything, but just believe God. We understand that when Lucifer and his angel in a fight against God in heaven, and he was thrown out and hurt. There was a host of legion that came down with him. And that's why the word of God said we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But against principalities and powers in high places. I can't remember the exact time last night on the wee of the morning. My wife was there. And brethren, I had no breath leave in my body. I was breathless. It's like someone held my throat. All I could hear was my wife voice saying, are you okay? And she didn't even understand at the moment what I was facing on the inside. I managed the strength to gasp for breath and to drink some water because I always have a bottle of water beside my bedside. And even when I want to call on the name of Jesus, it seems that there was nothing left. But inwardly, I was saying, God, thank you. Because the adversary cannot kill purpose. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. The young man preached today. And I heard there was so much in his message. But as I sat there, and I love to observe, and I watch the congregation, and we all sit attentively, and we listen to the young man. But you know that the word of God declared that there is a woe unto you. Because if you hear that word, all of us here, the holy person don't fully understand the message is, mis is uh, missionary uh, Cunningham daughter. Because she don't reach that age and young Shekinah. But all of us here have heard the word of God. But the question ring in my ears, what will we do? How many times have we heard such sound message, beautiful words? We don't want to hear at the end of our journey, depart from me. I know you not. It's beautiful, brethren, to come together like this. And as it declared today, young people, and not just young people, but all of us have seen so many things that are happening across the globe. It was just um, on Wednesday, my friend sent me this video clip. In Kingston, these young men were sitting, having a jolly time playing domino. And there come an unknown car, pouncing them. One of them 
he fell on his face with his, with his shorts down. Die in sin. One die with a scliff in his mouth. But he did not know that the dead angel was passing. But all of us have the opportunity to make it right with God. This morning, as I slept, and each time my wife will touch me and said, you know that you're going off again. You're not breathing. I said, yes, I hear it as well. You know, one thing, brethren, I don't fear death, but it's my soul. Is it right with God? And as I lay in the bed, I, I, I said to my, I, I fight it. I said, you know, I don't think I will make it because I have to drive the family to church. But I said to her, let I just lay a little bit just to rest. And I could feel my body vibrating. And I could hear the spirit, but it is a lie from the pit of hell. Give up, Jason, give up. But I lay there and she went to the bathroom and came out and she said, are you going to have your shower? I said, give me a little bit more time. And I looked in this life, what it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose their soul. It is prior time, but oftentimes, brethren, we, 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 we rush to the prior and don't understand that there's somebody need to be delivered. Somebody need to be encouraged. It's no more time for us to put on a nice show or a program but at the end of it who get the glory we take no credit for ourselves but all glory belongs to God I'm going to ask every believers and those who are kneeling at this time those who are on the, the, the broadcast at this moment Wherever you are, just believe God for something. Because his word declared that all things are possible if we only believe. Just believe God with me, church. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. Wherever you are, sitting or standing, just believe God. It is no secret what God can do. What God you have done for others. You will do it for us. With arms wide open. Lord you would pardon us. It is no secret. What God can do. Eternal God and everlasting father. The Prince of Peace. The only wise God. Hear my your servant Jason, God by name, standing in the midst of prayer. Not an hundred percent in hell, but God, I thank you. That Lord, you see fit God to give me strength. Amen. To stand at this hour, God. Lord, we pray for everyone that have come, amen, God, and have knelt at this moment. Oh, God Almighty, you know every struggle. You know every circumstances that stand before them. Oh, God Almighty, we thank you for this day. Lord, in such a way that as we sit, and hear your word. Lord, through your young servant today, we pray for a blessing. 
We ask you at this moment, God, that you release every heavy burden. Because your word tells us that we should cast all our cares upon you because you care it for us. God, many of us at the point at this time, Lord, we feel like this is the end. We feel like giving in. We feel like giving up. But we thank you, Lord, for your word that declare that, Lord, you will be our present help in time of trouble. We thank you today, mighty God, that you have already won victory over death. Oh, God Almighty, I thank you, God, that you see fit, God, to die for us. One that know no sin, and to him he died. Lord, here we are. Mercy was great, and grace was free. Poured and there was multiplied to me. And there, Lord, our burdened soul found liberty. At Calvary. Lord, every circumstances of the young people today. Lord, the temptation. The fleshy desires. Lord, the secret sins. Lord, the mind. The things that goes beyond. Oh God, their control. God, even at work, at home, at school, at play. God Almighty, cover them. Give them a new look, oh God. Consecrate them afresh. Mold them into what you want them to be. Break down, God, every barriers. Lord, every spiritual, amen, demonic attack that come up against God's people. We silence it now. We call them dead. In the name of Jesus. Your word declare let God arise. And his enemies be scattered. Scatter them now God. Expose them. Every altar that they have built. And looking to see the default. And the defeat of your people. Lord, today your people will rise above every circumstances. Lord, everyone that is looking to see the defeat of Zion will see victory. In the name of Jesus. I pray, God Almighty, that you will touch every lives here today. Let us not leave, oh God, the way we came. But Lord, we'll leave feeling rejuvenated. Oh God, feeling refreshed. Feeling anointed. God Almighty, I pray that you show up in somebody's life today. Every sickness, we nullify them. We recognize them. We call him by its name, cancer. Glory to God. Yes, the Holy Ghost. Amen. God, every blood pressure in the name of Jesus. Sickness of the mind. Sickness of the body. We trample on you right now. Oh, glory to God. In the name of Jesus. Walk into some homes, no Holy Ghost. Do a surgical, amen, God, spiritual of here now, God. Move up on every wall and every lintel. God Almighty, break every fetters. Break every fetters. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus. God, even as I stand your servant, one more time, God. I am weak, but thou art strong. Hold me, God, in the hollow palm of thine hand. I'm asking you for your covering over my life. In the name of Jesus. Anything that is going on wrong in this body. In the name of Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Flush it out now, Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. 
Lord, we come against sudden death. We come against heart attack. In the name of Jesus. Come on church. Somebody praise God with me. Oh glory to God. Believe God with me this afternoon. Oh glory to God. Let me suck here. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus. Cover me God. Under your blood. Every stress. God Almighty, every spirit of depression, we silence it now. In the name of oh God, I wish somebody would praise God. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Jesus. Jesus. Glory to God. Touch somebody today. Touch somebody today, God Almighty. Those who are not saved, that you will save them. Those who have come today, God, and have come, Lord, burdens. I pray tonight, God Almighty, this afternoon, that you will strengthen such an heart. God, remember Sister Road, not this moment. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We thank you for victory. We thank you, Lord, that you speak your word and heal all diseases. We thank you that you are the balm in Gideon. We thank you, Lord, that you speak your word and it was done. I'm asking you to cover your woman servant at this time. Grant her speedily recovery in the name of Jesus. Lord, what the enemy meant for evil, God, you have turned it around for her good. So God, this afternoon, may you lift her faith and grant her strength, God, to know that the church is praying. God, remember young Jermaine today, God Almighty. We thank you for such a, a, a vocal young man. Amen, God. I pray that you will cover him right now. Fill him up, God. Anoint him and use him for service. We come against God. Oh, God Almighty. Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, God Almighty. Glory. Oh, yes, Holy Ghost. God, I present this young man before you. Mash up every plan that is working against his life. Right now, God, every roadblock that I've set up now, God. As you said to Jehoshaphat, oh God Almighty, call a solemn fast. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. God, they will come in one direction, but the enemy will flee seven. Cover. Remember, Pastor Mitchell. Amen, God. The youth lead, I pray, God, that you cover your man's servant, grant him direction and vision. Oh God, amen. God, sister Esther, sister Harleen, oh God Almighty, every young people, amen. God, I put before you today, oh God, from the oldest to the youngest, in the name of Jesus, I pray for direction, I pray for vision, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God Almighty, even for the saints of White City who have entered, oh God, this ground. I pray pray that you cover them in the name of Jesus. Surround them with your blood in the name of Jesus. Break down every idol. Cast out God. Every massacre. Lord, wash us, God. Jesus. Jesus. Glory. Glory to God. Jesus, to exactly. glory to God. Yes, Holy Ghost. Jesus, God, we thank you. Yes, God. Jesus, thank you, God Almighty. Glory, Jesus. Yes, God. Yes, God. Lord, I thank you. 
Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Jesus. Yes, God. You see them. This is the true God Almighty. Jesus. Jesus. Glory to God. This is the church, man. Oh, God Almighty. Jesus. Glory. Jesus. God Almighty. Jesus. God Almighty. Jesus. Whoa. Glory to God. This is a church man. God Almighty. Jesus. God Almighty. God Almighty. I said this is the church. This is the church. Glory to God. Glory to God. Jesus. We pray for deliverance. God Almighty. God Almighty. Sabbath of the Sabbath. Glory to God. Jesus. Jesus. We pray for breakthrough. We pray for a miracle. In the name of Jesus. Oh God. Every Sabbath spirit. In the name of Jesus. Every Tupaya spirit. In the name of Jesus. Deliver the church God. Deliver Zion. In the name of Jesus. I said this is the church man. Oh God Almighty. Oh God Almighty. God Almighty. Jesus. Glory to God. Jesus. Oh God. Oh God. Jesus. Mighty Redeemer. Oh God. Release somebody today, God. Jesus. Cover your children, God. Cover your children. Every attack that have risen up against the church. In the name of Jesus. We nullify them. We set them on fire. In the name of Jesus. You said God this is the church. Man. Oh God upon which God. Your place. And the gates of hell. Shall never prevail. Remember the bishop God. We put him before you. We put him before you. We pray God for strength. We pray God for vision. We pray God for continually God's strength upon his life. And as he leads God's people, he will lead them well. The pastors, the ministers, the evangelists, everyone God I put before you. Even the one that is walking right now, God, on the street, on the outside. Touch them. The neighbors on the left, the neighbors on the right. Lord, release them now in the name of Jesus. Lord, this is a church in the name of Jesus. Lord, where healing shall be taking place. Deliverance will take place in the name of Jesus. Cover me one more time. Cover me, Lord, one more time. With your blood, God. I'm asking you for divine strength. I'm asking you, God, to anoint me afresh. Heaven, Lord, and, and I thank you that as God, as you spoke to me this morning, that it is well. Thank you for those who are praying for me and my family. Oh God. Jesus. And the church, let's praise God. Come on church, let's praise God. Somebody praise him. Come on, praise him in your own way. Start call upon Jesus. Tell him how worthy he is. Thank him for what he's about to do. 
thank him for the breakthrough thank him for the deliverance come on somebody call Jesus come on church call Jesus call Jesus he's never too tired to hear us remember us God remember each and every one bless us this hour deliver us from all evil and grant us strength God I leave everything 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 in your hands we pray God for divine breakthrough now and for total deliverance over God's people and all those who are listening online and every request that I've sent in may you deliver them and set them free we call it done we tell God thanks in advance for the victory and you rise from your feet and let the church say amen and amen thank you God bless you oh praise the name of Jesus hallelujah hallelujah to God to sing a song. Any chorus? Okay, no, no. So we're gonna, I'm gonna call upon, I'm gonna call on the ushers to come do the offering and I'm gonna call uh, ushers, ushers. collect the tithes and offering lord we pray that you bless this um offering lord i pray that um those who don't have to give you will make a way for them to be able to give next time father god lord because we know that you are our provider father god lord so i just pray that you help us lord and yeah in jesus name i pray amen, amen. the anointing Jesus breaks the yoke by the anointing just like the prophets told this is the day of the latter rain God is moving by his power again by the anointing Jesus breaks the yoke by Rain. God is moving by his power again. By 
bell so for evening service you can be here and watch all the items that we are going to present in Jesus name I say amen <laughs> 